Good morning, it's Monday the 8th of November. I trust that you're ready for coffee with God this morning. And if you are, turn to Galatians chapter 1. We're going to look at the last couple of verses in that chapter. And I trust you got some decent coffee to start off this Monday morning. I've got an amazing cup here with awesome crema on it. I'm looking forward to it. Mm. Well, I trust you had a good weekend and that uh, wherever you attended a service that you were blessed as well as you were a blessing to those who were in the church. And uh, as we go into this new week, listen to what Paul writes here at the end of Galatians from verse 22. I was still unknown by sight to the churches of Judea, which were in Christ, but only they kept hearing he who once persecuted us is now preaching the faith which he once tried to destroy. And they were glorifying God because of me. What's amazing about that is Paul owns his past. He realizes that in his zeal, in his absolute devotion to what he believed in and his passion, where he persecuted the church of Jesus Christ, now saved by that same Jesus Christ, once against everything that this new way, this new church, this new movement, this new faith was taking, he now becomes a part of them and he owns his past. He says, although I wasn't known because the, the new Christians didn't want to have much to do with the old, the old Paul, but the new Paul, they didn't know uh, me, but they knew about me. They knew that I was one who was persecuting them and they realized and they hear, they hear the account that Paul, who once persecuted the church, is now preaching the faith which he once tried to destroy. And they glorify God because of me. Don't discount, don't discredit, don't write off, don't obviate, don't try and explain away, don't try and excuse away anything out of your past. Own it. And put it under the grace of God. If you've truly repented of it, if you've confessed it to, to God through Jesus Christ, He forgives, He cleanses, He restores, and He uses to His glory. So, my past, my story, is what brings me to today. And I need to own it, and I need to give God the glory. Not allow the devil to put me on a guilt trip and make me feel all kinds of things about the things that were part of my past. I need to allow that which was the worst of my past to be that which glorifies God the most. And isn't that an awesome message? Zit nie een wonderlijke boodskap vir hierdie week, soos wat ons in hom ingaan. Daar is mense wat een laas selfbeeld het, wat wat een slechte geschiedenis, een slechte gelede het, en hulle kan nie vandag in die oor kyk en wil nie eens dink aan een moore nie. Ons kan hulle met hoop en versekering sê, ons verlede in Godse hande raak dan sy getuienis van sy genade. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that an amazing thought to hold on to? Our yesterdays are not for our pain, our yesterdays under God's grace are His glory for our tomorrow. So, as you look into this week, don't judge other people. Bring them God's grace. Bring them the hope that no matter what they've done, no matter how they've messed up, no matter how they lost their temper, how they did things that they regret today, how God's grace is enough for that. This man persecuted the church and now he preaches the faith that that church stands on. Nothing is impossible for God. Absolutely nothing. Grab that. Take that into today and every tomorrow that God has promised and planned and prepared for you. Think about that and uh, own your mistakes. Put them under the blood of Jesus Christ. Bring them to God. Confess them openly to Him so that He can work the miracle of bringing about His glory in your life. You're never, never too far gone. While you're breathing, 
God can still turn. God can still use you. You just have to surrender and submit to him, which is what Paul did. And look at, look at the result. Have a wonderful Monday. And I pray for you that the Lord will bless you and use you to bring glory to his name.